Hey, what's going on guys? One Up Ego here, and welcome to episode 3 of Scrimming Essentials, a weekly series where I'll be breaking down the basics of how to scrim. In this video, I'll explain mid-game, when to take fights, how to rotate into zone, and the best positioning for late game. Mid-game. Mid-game is defined by the first zone closing or the amount of people left. When there are 50 players or less, mid-game begins. Going into mid-game, you should have plenty of loot, max resources, and a strong confidence. If you need help with early game, check out episode 2. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. For mid game, there's three main objectives. Number 1. Making it into zone. Number 2. Surviving. Number 3. Positioning for the next zone. Making it into zone. During these mid stages of the game, making it into zone should be your top priority. Often, I see newer players dying to storm when they shouldn't be. If you're good on loot, don't bother checking that chest if you risk taking storm damage. Every second counts. If you're far from zone, you may have to sacrifice some time looting to start rotating earlier. Try to save your launch pads for later zones. These commodities are valuable and can save your life when you're in a pinch or give you a free rotate in later zones. I'll talk more about these in the next episode when I cover late game. Rotating into zone. Open up your map and take a look at where the zone is going to close. The areas that are furthest away from the zone will be most congested. In later zones, choke points will begin to form when players are exiting the storm together. To avoid these spots, we're going to rotate on the dead side of zone. This is characterized by areas of the map where the density of players are less. Here's a video of me identifying a choke point and rotating into zone for free. Alright, this guy is based up right there on the hill. He's going to hold me if I go that way. So let's follow this way where I know this guy's already rotated on top of me. So we're just going to follow his old builds. Um, check the side. As you can see, there's no one there. I'm just going to keep on going, just following his old builds. Going to try to cover my side a little bit in case they do decide to shoot me. I'm just going to hug this side of the cliff to make sure I get protected from the natural cover. Um, looking to my right, this guy's not rotating yet, so I should be fine. Um, just going to be careful, following these old builds in. I'm going to base up and break to make sure I don't get shot at. And we're in. Let's take a look at the map that I used. I identified the choke points, the red X's, where people can hold me, and I identified a free rotate, the yellow arrow, on the dead side of zone. Notice how I didn't follow the white arrow exactly into the circle, but rather took a path to its side. I chose this because the cliff side would cover me from potential enemies, allowing me to spend less mats on my rotate. Additionally, I also saw my opponent previously use that path to rotate, so I know it's free because he didn't get shot at. Surviving in high intensity games such as scrims and tournaments, surviving until late game should be your main objective. If you're good on loot, don't throw your game by taking mid game fights. Often in mid game, fights will be third and fourth party. I would only suggest fighting if you have very scuffed loot or you're forced to fight. If you do engage, start an internal clock. You need to have a sense of urgency when taking the fight as you can be third party at any moment. Additionally, only push someone if you tag them a lot and you feel confident in taking the fight. If they disengage, don't pursue them. On the other hand, if someone tags you, immediately build and then heal while assessing the situation. If they don't push you, try to disengage and rotate another way. But if they do push you, try to get tags onto them before taking the fight. If you can get away from a fight mid-game, do it. Always keep your eyes open for a chance to escape because if you're dead, you can't make it to endgame, which is the focus of scrims. Here's an example of me taking an in-game fight choice to win the World Cup. But the question among a lot of these players was, will the Dubs have the confidence well, Dubs so. Despite lack of So let's watch this fight in slow motion. I notice that my opponent starts ramping toward me with no intention of stopping. I wall off my sides to protect myself. I look back to try to get a shotgun shot off. I miss, but I continue to ramp up. Tag him once. I continue to apply pressure with my SMG. He drops down for a 50-50 and I connect a few tag shots, ending the fight. This fight took about 13 seconds from start to finish. As a word of caution, however, try to finish your fights in 30 seconds or less in order to prevent third parties. Also, make sure to double check the Discord's rules to make sure you're not breaking any storm rules by fighting. Positioning for the next zone. Ideally, try to position yourself on natural high ground. Hills, mountains, and houses are good examples. Cliff sides are also pretty good as they're often left uncontested and can still give you the same view as high ground. If it's not too contested, try to base up in the middle of the first four zones unless it's in a river or a valley as the next zone will tend to be in the center. And during the fourth zone, try to position yourself on the edge of the zone. Fifth zone will pull away from the center and you can potentially have it. When you find a good spot to base up, try to use hard mats such as metal and brick first 
as often players will see wooden bases as a sign of weakness and will spam their builds. Additionally, you can also build a base next to some resources in order to farm it and get back some of your materials. Here's an example of me choosing a spot to make a base on. Okay, let's see, zone's pulling this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out the back. I noticed that there's people to my right. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that real quick. You can see them right there. I'm gonna run over this mountain real quick because I know this is the dead side of the zone and zone's gonna be pulling in much slower than the opposite way. And I know, notice how a lot of people are based up to my right by the river. Um, those are all the people that decided to try to park their spot right next to the middle of the zone. This is why I don't recommend basing it right next to a river um, because it tends to be really congested. Um, also because if people are looking in on you, they can shoot at you. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk through this bush real quick, make sure there's nobody in here. Okay, there's nobody in here. This means this whole entire side is potentially mine. So I can choose anywhere on this side. I'm going to go ahead and park right here. Um, this looks like a good spot because I can farm up this wood real quick, get back my materials. And I'm going to go ahead and make a temporary base because I want to wait a few more seconds to see where the next zone is going to be. So let me just go ahead and build a quick um, one by one. Well, in this case, a 2 by 2 I guess. Um, let me pick this wood up. Uh, so the next zone is going to be pulling behind me. So let me go far up the rest of this wood. Um, let me go back in this one by one. Let's take, get some vision real quick. Um, I'm thinking about taking that hut. Let me see if it's inside zone. I'm thinking that that's the plan. So there's people down below me, but I want to have a good spot. Yeah, this is definitely going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and farm all of this shed real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and get all this mats to replace it with. I'm going to do it with metal. And this part I'm going to do with wood just because I have wood to replace it with. Um, I'm really only going to be doing this as like a decoy double base. I'm really only going to be chilling in this metal part of my base. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these guys and just keep monitoring them just to see if I can get a pick. Now that you've seen that first clip, let's break it down. I first identify the next zone and then realize where potential threats may be. I decide to rotate out of the back of my base where the dead side of zone is to avoid potential fights. I then scan my surroundings to identify any threats and base up next to resources to refresh my materials. Then I wait for the next zone and base up next to a hut which I can farm for resources and have high ground over the guys in the river and the edge of fourth zone. When planning your positioning, remember to always double check where people are before you make your rotate. If you base up in a congested location, be prepared to take fights at any moment. Always have a backup plan in case something goes wrong, and try to stay focused while being based up so you don't get caught off guard. This concludes episode 3 of Screaming Essentials. Join me next week when I'll be breaking down endgame, how to rotate in congested lobbies, how to find frags, and how to win the game. I hope this video helped you out, and have a great time screaming. Thank you.